Today I wanted to switch things up and film things a little bit differently. I was getting ready to go out to dinner with a friend and I wanted to do a full face of makeup but I didn't really want to talk to the camera. Instead, I'm showing you how I did my entire face and makeup very close up with this natural light so you can literally see everything I'm doing as I do a beautiful full face of makeup for going out. So if you want to see how I went from this to this, go ahead and keep on watching. I always start out with some kind of lip balm when I start my makeup. So I applied the new Tower 28 Lip Sock. This is just the clear one, but I like applying this first so then when I do my lips at the end of my makeup look, my lips are nice and hydrated. And then I always start with brows. My three go-to brow products are the Anastasia Brow Wiz, the NYX Brow Pen, and then a clear brow gel. I've really been liking the Rare Beauty one recently. And I kind of switched up my brow routine a little bit, but you're going to see everything that I'm doing today. So I like to start by taking the brow pen and I lightly line underneath my brows and then I do a couple light brow strokes throughout my brow hairs. So so I lightly fill them in with the pencil first and then I take the brow pen and this is why I never show my brows on camera because my camera can never focus on my eyebrows it focuses on my hand or the products but anyways I'm taking the brow pen and just drawing some more hair like strokes throughout my brows and I kind of like to use a deeper color for the strokes so for this I'm using espresso but for the brow whiz I'm using medium brown and then I just take a concealer brush that has some leftover concealer on it from the day before and I just lightly carve out the underneath of my brows just to kind of clean everything up and then I take the Rare Beauty Brow Gel. This is just a clear brow gel and I use that to kind of fluff up my brows and make them look a little fluffier up top. I know recently I've been doing more of that laminated brow look but I'm kind of switching things up a little bit and then there were a couple brow hairs that were bothering me so I just kind of snipped those off and here's a little before and after of my brows. It's just a very subtle fill-in, nothing too intense. It's very easy for me to do and I love how my brows look. And then I went ahead and jumped to my face so I'm taking the Elf Jelly Pop Primer. I've been trying this one out recently and I'm still not sure on my thoughts on this one. It kind of reminds me of the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer where it is kind of sticky but it also feels a little bit more hydrating as well but it does have a really nice delicious watermelon scent to it. You can definitely see the stickiness here. I've seen some people stick the primer to their face especially like Michaela on TikTok but I couldn't get that to work. And then for foundation I use the YSL All Hours Foundation. I've been loving the finish of this one because it has a really nice loose luminous matte finish to it. My shade is a little bit off today so just kind of ignore that but I did use a new foundation brush today. This brush is new from Ruffer. It's the B02 brush and it kind of reminds me of the BK Beauty 101 brush that I've been using like religiously since I got it but this brush is smaller than the BK Beauty one and it's a little bit shorter and I'd say a little bit more dense as well but this did do a really nice job at applying my foundation and kind of getting around all of the crevices around my face, around my nose, and around my brows and everything. Everything. And then I realized my foundation was looking a little bit too yellow so I added some of my Catrice Tinted Serum Foundation in the shade 10 and I just applied that right on top. My shade match still wasn't perfect. Whenever I'm so so fair it is just so hard for me to match my light skin but you know we just kind of worked with it. But I really liked filming these close-up shots in the natural light so you can see exactly how my skin looks and how these products are laying on my skin. So after I do a light layer foundation I like to jump back to my eyes so I'm taking my favorite eyeshadow primer ever that is the rare beauty one like I said in a previous video I'm so happy to have this primer back in my life it has just a little bit of a tint to it it is not too thick on my eyelids and all of my eyeshadows apply beautifully on top of this primer and then I'm using another new refer brush to blend in this primer this is the b01 brush it's kind of like just a smaller version of that foundation brush I was using and it's really nice and short and dense so it's really good at applying products like this and concealer as well it it kind of reminds me of like using your finger to blend in product just because it's so dense. And then for my eyeshadow look today, I kind of did just my go-to going out eyeshadow look. So I started with the Patrick Ta eyeshadow palette. I cannot stop using this palette. The mattes in this palette are so beautiful. So I'm starting with that light yellowy vanilla shade on a Refer 15 brush. This is just a nice fluffy brush and I'm kind of dusting that shade throughout my crease just to set the eyeshadow primer down in my crease. And I'm really only using a little bit of product for this. This. And then on the same brush, I'm picking up my favorite transition shade from this palette. This is hands down my most used shade, and I'm applying this throughout my entire crease. What I love about these shadows is that they are just so easy to work with. They blend out so beautifully, and they really look so smooth on the eye. So I'm just building up that shade in my crease until I'm happy with the pigment, and then I picked up a little bit more of that shade, and I added that to the outer part of my lid, bringing that into my outer crease. Then I took the next deepest cool tone shade 
shade and I use that to deepen up the outer part of my eye even more. And I'm still using a fluffy brush so I get a more diffused look on my eyelid. And then I went into the other palette that I cannot get enough of. It is the Get Stoned Stoned palette. And this shade in particular, Champagne, is just everything to me. I literally cannot stop wearing this eyeshadow, guys. Just look at how pretty that is. So if you wanted like a really impactful look, you could use your finger to apply this, but I wanted more of a soft wash of shimmer. So I just took a Refer 01 brush, which is just kind of like your basic crease brush. And I took that on the flat side of the brush and I'm just lightly dusting that on my eyelid. So this is going to give me a lot of sparkle throughout the eye, but not a lot of like intense pigment. And that's exactly what I wanted. But I like that you can build up this shadow if you want to. And then I took my second favorite shade from that palette, which is Old Money. Again, these two neutral shades are just everything to me. And I placed this shade more on the outer three quarters of my lid just to add a little bit more depth since this shade does have more brown in it. But seriously, how beautiful is this sparkle? So then once I get my eyelids done, I like to jump back to my face. You can see that my spots are still peeking through. So I'm going to take my favorite full coverage spot concealer, and that is the NARS Soft Matte Concealer. And I'm using the shade Vanilla. And I'm just picking that up on a flat concealer brush, and I'm placing that on all the little spots that are still coming through. I think I just started my period this day, so my acne was a little crazy this day, but nothing that the NARS Soft Matte Concealer can't cover. So I literally dot that all over my face, and then I took the e.l.f. under eye corrector on that same brush I used to apply my eyeshadow primer, and I just applied a light layer of that under my eyes. I honestly don't think it made that much of a difference watching back the footage now, but you know, it's something. And I like to let this NARS concealer sit on my face for a little bit, so that's why I jumped to doing my under eye corrector. And then I like to spray my face with the Charlotte Tilbury setting spray. This is just going to kind of help set the makeup, but also help me blend it out as well. And this spray just gives a, such a beautiful finish to your skin. And then I switched to more of a fluffy concealer brush, and I'm using that to blend out the spot concealer. Next, I went in with my under eye concealer. I'm using the Natasha Denona one in R2, and I'm starting to get some windowing on this product, which just shows how much I use this this really is my favorite concealer so I do a couple lines under my eyes and then I'll do a soft line kind of against my eyeshadow so that's gonna clean up the outer edge of the shadow you'll see that in a second so then I'm just taking that same concealer brush and I'm patting in the concealer and then once I get to that outer edge of my shadow I like to kind of relax my face and I use the concealer to clean up that outer edge of the shadow just to give me a nice smooth line so you can kind of see here that I'm following the angle of my lower lash line outwards a little harder on my right eye because my right eye is just slightly more hooded than my left. Then I took the Lunar Beauty translucent powder but first I used my finger just to tap out any creases that still might be under my eyes and I've started to use less powder than I was previously so I took my little powder puff that I got off Amazon. I just dipped it once into the powder and then I smoothed the puff on the back of my hand to get off the excess powder and that really distributes the powder nicely on the sponge and I just used that little amount of powder to set under my eyes. For a minute there, I was using too much powder, which would make my skin feel so, so dry. So I've drastically cut the amount of powder I've been using and that works so much better for me. And then I'll also use the powder and the puff to set the center of my face. So the center of my forehead, on my nose, around my little upper lip area, and then my chin. Pretty much just the areas I tend to get a little oily on throughout the day. And then since I was going out, I did want to set the rest of my face. So I used the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder in the shade one and I'm just kind of using a fluffy flat face brush to set the rest of my face. I actually think I need to repress this powder soon because it's getting a little tricky to pick up the edges. I have a mini of this powder and I might buy the full size once I finish this one. So now that my base is completely set I like to jump back to my eyes. I know I'm kind of all over the place here but this is just the order I like to do my makeup in. So now that everywhere around my eye is set I just like to take a little crease brush and I'm patting along that outer edge of my shadow just just to soften that line a little bit because I still want that line and that shape of the shadow but I don't want it to be super super harsh. I did end up buying two of the new Patrick Ta blush shades. I mentioned this in a previous video that I was so tempted to buy them and I did it. I just could not stop thinking about this particular blush shade. This is a shade in Not Too Much and I am so obsessed with this you guys. Before I bought this one the only shade I had was She's Blushing and that one I always just thought was a little bit too pigmented but this shade is so 
perfect. And with Patrick Ta's little blushes, you want to start with the powder, which just feels so wrong and backwards. I'm taking that powder blush and applying that all over my cheeks. I like a really heavy blush application. I just love blush. And his formula is just so easy to use and it looks very, very smooth on the skin. And then on the same brush, I'm picking up a little bit of the cream and you just apply that right on top of the powder. And this is what's going to give your blush a little bit of a glow to it, but it's not too glowy. Like it's just perfect. I'm so happy I bought this shade because I think it's going to become my new go-to blush. Then I took my Bare Minerals highlighting blush in the shade Rose Glow on a little powder blush and I applied that pretty much right along my cheekbones, kind of where my concealer meets my blush. I like that this product has a little bit of a pink tint to it, but it also has a lot of a glow, kind of like a highlighter. So I just love placing this along the entire cheekbone. And then for bronzer, I grabbed my lightest bronzer, which is this one from Patrick Ta in the shade She Statuesque. And honestly, I think this one is either too light for me or it's just not that pigmented, which is so weird because his blushes are so pigmented. And I just felt like this really wasn't doing much for me. And I really tried to dip my brush into the product and build it up. And I feel like I wasn't getting much color payoff. So I don't know if it's the color or the product, but I honestly might declutter this because every time I use it, I'm just so unimpressed. So anyways, I switched to my Pat McGrath bronzer and I used that to bronze around my forehead and my hairline and just a little bit of bronzer along my cheekbones. Nothing too much because again, I'd rather have more blush than bronzer. And then I just took a little bit of that bronzer around my nose just to lightly contour it, nothing too crazy. And then for highlighter, I took my Rare Beauty highlighters. I have the two lightest shades and I just mixed those together and applied that to the highest point of my cheekbone. I love these shades together. It's like the perfect highlighter shade for me. And now back to the eyes. Yes, I know, I jump around so much. So I'm taking this little flat brush. This is a Refer 02 brush. Everything I use today, including the brushes and products, will be linked down below, so don't worry about that. But I took that shade that I put in my crease along my entire lower lash line. And then again, I took that next deepest shade and applied that to the outer part of my lower lash line just to deepen it up. And then I wanted to do a little bit of a shadow wing, so I took the dark brown in the palette on a little angled brush. And I just start by stamping that along the outer part of my top lash line. And then I like to relax my face and I draw a line outwards. Again, I'm following the angle of my lower lash line and I connected that line back in to make a little wing and my shape was looking a little funky so I ended up just cleaning off my brush and kind of maneuvering that shadow around to get it into the wing shape that I want. So you can see I'm just kind of flicking and moving around that shadow until I'm happy with the shape. And then I took a highlighter shade from my inner corner. I went into the Adept Flying Fiddles palette and took the shade Honey Spurge. This is like my favorite inner corner highlight shade right now. It is just so bright so I applied that on the inner corner and then I also kind of brought it into my inner lid just to give it a little bit more brightness right in there. And then I lined my waterline with a nude liner. This is the Tarte Fake Awake Liner. And then I popped on some mascara. I used the e.l.f. Lash Extender, but I did pop on a Bright Lashes All Natural. And I like to use my fingers to apply my lashes. I like to look down into my mirror and I stick on the lash. And then I first start with the inner and outer corner and make sure those are nice and placed down before I move on. All right, so that is what the lash looks like right after I applied it. And then I like to take my little squeezy tool and I'm squeezing my natural lashes with the fake ones and this kind of gets the lash band to be really nice and tight on your eyelid and you can see that the lash kind of sticks to the tool but make sure you just pull down so the lash stays down because if you pulled up the lash is going to come off and you don't want that. Now you can see this inner part of my eye is kind of blank right there so I do want to add some liner so back into the Patrick Ta palette I'm taking a little bit of that black shadow and I like to stamp that along the lash band to kind of help hide it and just make it look a lot more smooth and then I took the gel black from that palette and I used that to line that very inner part of my eyelid and then I also use that liner to line my tight line as well and this just really makes the lash blend in seamlessly with your shadow and your liner and everything and then I was looking at my full face of makeup and I decided since I was going out I want a black in my waterline instead of a nude so I just used my favorite black liner this is the house labs gel coal liner in punk and this is so creamy it's so black so I just glided that on and then I went back to that deep brown shade from the palette and I just kind of lightly stamped that along my waterline and I just very softly blended out that black but not too much. And then for a little finishing touch I decided I wanted to add more of the champagne shade so I just picked that up on my brush and brushed that along my eyelids. And then for under my brow bone I took Bright from my palette with Sigma and that is the final eye look. I love how this look turned out like this is my new go-to going out eye. And then I doused my face in my Charlotte Tilbury setting spray again and then for lips, I kept it really simple today. I just blanked out my lips with my foundation brush 
as always. And then I took my Makeup by Mario Lip Plumping Serum in Nude Glow and applied a light layer of that all over. And then I took my Makeup by Mario Lip Liner in Smoky Pink and just lightly lined the center of my lips. And that is the final makeup look. I was so happy with how my makeup turned out this day. Let me know if you guys like this style of video. I really enjoyed filming it because I love watching YouTube videos when I get ready, but I can't do that if I'm filming, you know what I mean? So give this video a like if you like this style of video. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and don't forget to like and subscribe.